Hola, good afternoon. Buenas tardes. My name is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications with La Plaza de Cultura y Artes welcoming you to today's En Casa con la Plaza Cocina. En Casa, of course, is our virtual programming. We've been, this is two years now that we've been doing these online programs, conversations, presentations, performances, and today's demonstrations. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, Union Pacific Foundation and the Institute of Muse Museum and Library Services for sponsoring this month's programs. Before we get started, La Plaza de Cultura y Artes has opened every day except Tuesday from noon to 5 p.m. That's this week. Starting next week, we'll be closed both Mondays and Tuesdays. We'll be open Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays from noon to 5 p.m. La Tienda Gift Store is also open and it'll be the same hours as, la, as is La Plaza Cocina, which will be open Wednesday through Sunday from 12 to 5 p.m. And starting pretty soon coming up, uh, cooking classes, cooking demonstrations at La Plaza Cocina. Uh, at La Plaza, we have all of our galleries open, Calle Principal, uh, Alley Starts Here, our temporary exhibitions, Patriotism and Conflict, Fighting for Country co y Comunidad, and LA Memo Chicana Chicano Art from 1972 to 1989. At La Plaza Cocina, we have our, our first, uh, our inaugural exhibition that's still up, Maiz, Past, Present, and Future, a tribute to the cuisine's most essential ingredient. Uh, this week also, uh, we have uh, there at La Plaza, uh, a live program on Thursday night, uh, the Cultural Influencers of the Chicano Moratorium. That's at seven o'clock there at La Plaza on the fourth floor at seven o'clock. And then next Sunday, Dia de los Niños, our second family day of the year from 12 to four coming up next Sunday. Uh, and now with that, let me introduce to you uh, our host for today's In Casa con la Plaza Cocina, Jimena Martin. Please join us, Jimena. Good afternoon. Hi everybody, nice Monday. Um, today we have our guest, um, Claire Rizzoli of Pocha LA. Um, she uh, runs and owns Hefa Own uh, Pocha LA and she's been with us before. If you get a chance, go visit her in um, Eagle Rock where she's located at. And today she's gonna be making uh, calabacitas con elote. So please let me introduce you, uh, Miss Claire Rizzoli. Hi. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. <laughs> How's it going? So good. So Claire, you can. Um, I saw this thing that popped up on Facebook about Hefa owned restaurants through the Pepsi Foundation or PepsiCo, which is fabulous. So please tell us all about this Hefa owned project. Wonderful. I'm so honored uh, to be one of the participants in this program um, with PepsiCo. I wanna rewind just a little bit, just to give you a little bit of backstory. Um, so every year I do a vision board. This is something that I have been doing for um, the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years. Um, Pocha was actually an idea that I had on my vision board about five years ago. Um, and then we gave birth to Pocha, um, the restaurant, the concept, um, actually in Highland Park. Um, not Eagle Rock, but it's, it's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So sorry. It's not sure. It's all good. 90042. Um, so we gave birth to Pocha, um, actually signed our lease February 2020, um, just uh, a month before uh, the global shutdown, and then officially opened our doors uh, to the public for takeout and delivery only um, April 2020. So Pocha was an idea on my vision board. And then um, another idea that I had started expanding, you know, the brand with was this idea to um, package our salsas. So just a little more rewinding. So many years I worked for California Pizza Kitchen for the two guys that started California Pizza Kitchen. And I saw what they built, the brand that they built and saw, um, you know, when, when they sold it to Pepsi, um, when they started um, with their frozen pizzas in the, you know, in the, in the, in the freezer section of the grocery store. So I had always had this, you know, they were, they were my benchmark. So when I started Pocha, I really wanted to sort of duplicate what they had done um, in terms of the brand that they grew. So I had uh, my creative designer, I had him make um, just prototypes of these salsa packages and I put them on my vision board. I actually have the vision board right over there. It's up in my little 
house right there. <laughs> so I have it right front and center. And on that, uh, oh no, Paco, hold on, that's my little dog. Hold on a second. No way. No way. All right. This is Paco. <laughs> You're going to take Paco. My son's going to take Paco right now. Um, so on my vision board, I have uh, these salsa prototypes, and then I printed out um, Frito-Lay and Pepsi logos on my vision board because my vision was to, um, to, to partner with them and really grow this brand together. So not too long ago, I had an opportunity to, to apply for some grants um, that you know, so many of these big companies put out there and graciously offered to um, restaurants, carnicerias, bodegas, uh, to really help us during this, you know, this this time of COVID. And Pepsi was actually the very first, PepsiCo was the very first um, and only grant that we had received through their um, Impacto Hispanic, Hispanic Business Accelerator Program. So we were the recipients of a grant. And through that opportunity, um, we were presented with another opportunity to be showcased at this big event, charity event, fundraising event that's tied to the NFL called the Taste of NFL. And it takes place a day before the NFL. It, it was at the Peterson Museum here in Los Angeles. And um, they, uh, you know, raise funds to, um, to, uh, to help um, end hunger. Um, so there's just a bunch of different organizations that they um, contribute to. So it's a fundraising event, but just a really great opportunity for, you know, up and coming emerging brands, chefs, restaurateurs um, to be showcased. So we were offered that opportunity. And then from that opportunity spun off this other opportunity, PepsiCo. And I want everyone to know about this because there are so many resources out there that a lot of us just don't know about. You know, a lot of times we just feel stuck or we feel like, you know, it's really hard to compete with um, other brands out there that, you know, are recognizable, like, the, you know, the giants, um, so there's all kinds of opportunities out there and resources out there that many of us don't know about. So if anyone is on here or is uh, listening to the playback or watching the playback and you are in um, the food, uh, food and beverage industry, bodega, carniceria, restaurant, I want you to know about PepsiCo and this campaign called Juntos Crecemos, which means we grow together and we really do. Um, Juntos Crecemos, you should check it out, PepsiCo, juntoscrecemos.com. Um, they have a campaign there called Jefa Owned. And what they're doing is they are really putting their money where their mouth is and really paying attention to this emerging market. I don't know if you guys know this, but in the last few years of all the new businesses that are opening, Latinos are opening business and particularly Latinas are opening businesses at a like record rate. Um, I forgot what the percentage was and I don't want to misquote, but we are entrepreneurs. We are opening businesses at a much higher rate compared to the regular rate of which people are opening up businesses right now. And having said that, not only are we opening up businesses faster than any other group, we also have access or don't have access to as many resources. And we also, um, you know, just don't, a lot of us just don't have, you know, the, the certain backing that we need to get those resources. So, Pepsi is really putting their money where their mouth is and lifting us up, growing with us, um, giving us opportunities, not just financially, but the opportunities that we've received, Pocha has received just as a result of media opportunities. Tomorrow I'm doing an interview for People Español. Um, I was on Hoy Día. Um, I was on CNN Dinero. I was on... Um, Arrojo Vivo. There's just all kinds of just media opportunities that they've been helping with, with helping me with to grow my business. And I'm just one of many that they're just, you know, helping. So at first it was like, what? Like you want to, you want to help me? Like why? <laughs> um, but they're what they're doing for our communities. It, I mean, it, it brings tears to my eyes. I mean, they're, you know, they're, a, they're, a, they're a big brand. They're a household name. There's a lot of money and a lot of backing. 
behind them and they're um, really building us up. So I'm just really grateful. I've noticed a huge shift in my business. I've noticed a huge shift in just, you know, um, the online visibility. There's a whole eight week program that I'm going through with them and they're just helping me streamline you know, my, my POS system with my online apps, you know, my um, online ordering and apps and just helping bring a much more cleaner and professional visibility to our brand. So it's not just, you know, here, have some money. It's also here, let us hold your hand and show you how to build a powerhouse brand um, alongside us. So it's, it's, it's amazing. And I highly recommend for you to check it out if you're in the food or beverage industry or you know anyone that is just know that there there's companies out there that really care and they want to help and they have the money to do so claire you just blew me away that is such amazing news that's so wonderful that pepsico is has supported you in that way and visibility to your restaurant and you as a hefa mm -hmm. to be an example for our young ladies out there looking to be entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and pepsico has been it's very supportive of the community as well pepsico is a big supporter of La Plaza Cultura y Artes in a sense they provided the opportunity for us to create a garden and culinary program for children at La Plaza. Uh, we have a beautiful edible garden. Um, we have La Troca that goes out to the community that um, celebrates indigenous ingredients. And now this is so wonderful that we're able to work together, be under the PepsiCo family. And that's so wonderful. They are supporting individuals and jefas like you. So when I saw your Facebook pop-up came in, I was like, oh my God, you got to share what this is all about. Because I know how hard you work, how dedicated you are. And what a hard time it was when you first started, you know, when La Pocha LA came up because it was like smack in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know anything other than opening up a restaurant during a pandemic. Like I don't really have anything to compare it to. Um, you know, I've, I've never owned a traditional business. Um, I didn't have any commercial kitchen experience prior. I mean, I have worked in, you know, the hospitality and food and beverage as a server. Um, and I have a passion for food and for entertaining and for hosting and for bringing people together. Um, but, you know, this was, I, this was really literally a dream that I just, you know, jumped off a cliff and found my wings as I was, you know, flying and, or, you know, <laughs> falling really you just kind of take the leap and then discover your wings as you go down and fly up so just to feel that kind of support and be embraced by um a company like that has really just been a godsend um well congratulations yeah. i know you're going to fly even higher and above and beyond mm -hmm. and go surpass your vision boards i know we were talking about other things that you had on your vision board which i so um in awe of but with that said let's come back down here okay. and um and please um share your your recipe of calabacitas con elotes please today wonderful so it's um calabacitas con elote y rajas um which are the uh chile pasi uh, pasillos or chile poblano um and what I love is that, you know, recently in the last few months, I've been trying to make more plant based or vegetarian choices. Um, I'm not vegetarian um, and I'm not vegan, but I have been trying to just incorporate, you know, healthier um, choices in my household. And also I'm a mom, I'm a single mom. So I'm always trying to figure out how to incorporate healthier choices, but also like make a clean meal on the fly. Uh, so this is um, a recipe that um, you know, I found and sort of modified and made it my own as I prepared it several times. Um, it's very simple. And what I love about it is that it can be served as a side dish, um, or you can even make like a taco out of it. You can, you know, put it in a flour tortilla or corn tortilla, whatever your speed is. Um, my mom's from Sonora, so I tend to lean a little bit more towards the flour. Um, probably the, the corn agrees with me a little bit more. My body likes it more. <laughs> but I love a good flour tortilla. Um, so it's very simple. Um, it's quick. It's clean. There is um, some dairy in there, um, but you can, you know, if you are vegan, you can um, use some, you know, vegan cheeses or um, instead of using crema mexicana, which I'm going to use in my recipe, um, you can also use something that's uh, more vegan based. I actually do a lot of um, like a 
uh, coconut milk um, instead of crema mexicana. So the one that I'm making today is vegetarian. It's not vegan and it's really simple and it's delicious and filling and it makes me feel like I'm a good mom because I'm giving my son veggies, but it's also um, tasty. <laughs> so um, shall I get started? Absolutely. Let's get started. Wonderful. So can you guys see me here? Is this good? Is this good? This, okay. So I have all my ingredients out here and I'll tell you what they are. Um, these are the calabaza. Um, these are the Italian squash. You can also use the Mexican squash, which are a little bit, um, you know, more um, like stout and and fuller, but this is a, an Italian squash, calabaza. I'm also um, going to chop up um, an onion. This is a yellow or brown onion. Um, we'll chop that up as well. I have a couple um, poblano chilies there. I already made them. Let me tell you how I made them. And just for um, just for time, you know, purposes, um, I had them prepared already. But um, you know, the green uh, chilies, the poblano chilies that you find in the supermarket, I actually just put them on the open range. Um, and put a fire over them um, until they get a little bit charred. And then I'll put them in like a plastic bag or something so they sweat and then let them sit in that plastic bag for a while. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And then when you take it out of the plastic bag, you'll be able to like um, get all of the, the chard um, out on the, from the outside. So you'll be able to throw away all that peel and the chard. And then you want to chop off the top um, and pull out you know, the seeds. You can do that. You can pull up seeds. Um, you can see that they're, you know, nice and clean. I peeled off all of the, the chard um, from the open flame. So I'm going to chop these off as well. This is, these are also called rajas. Um, and then um, I also have um, some white corn. I'm going to throw this in there. This is the elote. I'm going to white corn. I'm just going to uh, saute it with the calabaza, with the rajas, with the, um, cebolla, the onion, and also a little bit of garlic. I have some minced garlic here. And then I have crema mexicana. And then I have some queso fresco. And then once it's all done, um, you can just, you know, top it with like a little hit of cilantro as a garnish if you want. Um, I'm not going to be doing that today, but that is something that you can do just to give it a nice pop of color or something. So what I'm going to do first is um, let me chop up the calabaza. Free. Ask me any questions or anything if you want. Please tell us a bit more about your your restaurant. Um, there's lots of Mexican restaurants out there, but what is your restaurant story? What is their vision? So our story is that you know we call it modern Mexican, but a lot of people kind of confuse that with Tex-Mex. It's not Tex-Mex. Um, modern Mexican for us really means um, rooted in tradition, you know, not compromising tradition, but also in a way catering to some of the modern food trends. So I think that people today um, are really looking for clean, fresh, healthy options. And honestly, that is what that is what Mexican food is. But I think a lot of places, you know, that have, are kind of chains that have kind of Americanized it. There's a lot of sauces and a lot of cheese and a lot of it just tends to be a little bit heavier, which honestly, our, our, our food doesn't isn't, doesn't have to be that way. So we offer some plant based options. Um, everything that we make is made from scratch. So you're not going to find a single jar or can um in in our restaurant i mean everything is made from scratch um you know we use fresh chiles we use even like the broth we're not using like you know nor suiza which you know that's great it's it's it's, it's easy it gives it like gives it a nice you know flavor but we really try to create the flavor with you know the the vegetables from for the broth um onions uh celery carrots um oregano uh, so it is um, really just about offering a really clean, fresh um, experience. What I love about us is that we have some entertainment as well. So my, um, my little tagline is you come for the food, but you stay for the love. Uh, we do have um, on Wednesday something called Noches Bohemias, where we usually have like a really nice acoustic um, experience on the back patio. On Sundays, we've been doing a mariachi brunch from 11.30 to 1.30, so that's kind of nice. Hold on a second, I'm just gonna 
put this in a dish. And uh, on Thursdays, we've been having a, a really fun DJ. Um, DJ La Velatini is her name. I love her. She's a total pocha too. <laughs> and um, it's nice. I mean, the, the back patio um, has just been a huge hit. Just a little backstory on that. Um, when we first um, took over the space, it was a restaurant before for almost, I don't know, it was like 30, 40 years. It's been there for a while. Um, and the back patio and even the front patio before this whole COVID thing, they weren't even permitted areas to, to dine, to serve food um, or to serve alcohol. But then when COVID hit, there was this thing called the Alfresco dining, uh, Alfresco outdoor dining permit. And they started, you know, issuing all these permits to restaurants for outdoor dining. So we got grandfathered in with that. So that's sort of the silver lining of, you know, some of this craziness um, that happened. Um, so now we have the back patio that's permitted. Um, let's talk this up a little bit. The front patio, we've got a cute um, awning out there now and there's um, seating on the front patio. Um, so it's just a, it's a really cute spot. And it's sort of a work in progress, not sort of, it is a work in progress. Still not the vision realized, you know, as we grow, we are reinvesting back in the business and making it, excuse me, cuter. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it's starting to, starting to really come together. We have in three dining rooms inside, much bigger um, space than uh, my vision board uh, <laughs> uh, sort of laid out. Um, I kind of bit off a bigger chunk than I could chew, but you know, I, I learned how to do it. Some days it feels like a real octopus with like all these different like moving parts, you know? Um, so, yeah. So do you guys have happy hour? Do you guys have margaritas? Oh, so yes. Um, so all of our, we do have a full liquor license. Um, and we don't, I mean, we do have a full liquor license, but we don't have the full bar actually uh, up and running yet. So this week we're actually completing the construction of the bar, um, you know, getting everything to go through with the department of building and safety and the health department, like all that had to, you know, to, that all had to be approved. And with COVID, it just, everything seems like it's taking really long. Well, you probably know too with everything that you have going on, you know, at, at the best side. So um, we finally got approved um, and we have the construction for the plumbing and everything else finishing up this week. So once that bar is completely done, then we'll serve a more extensive bar menu. But for right now, we have micheladas, beer, wine, margaritas made with real tequila, um, also mezcal. Um, oh, you're making me cry. Um, we also have... Um, Palomas, palomas, yes. And so here's a, here's what's different about our um, our uh, what do you call it drinks. Everything's made with fresh pressed juices. So my joke is you could retox and detox at the same time. Well, uh, that I mean, is really making me cry. Uh, so first, I'm going to woo, do this. Uh, oh my goodness. I haven't chopped an onion in a while because I make someone else do it at Pocha. <laughs> Usually like the new people, that's like their initiation. I make them chop onions. You Whoa. know, it's a really uh, quick uh, tip for the onions. If you wear contact lenses, yeah, it's not as bad because the contact lenses cover your eyes so that when the oils oh, come from chopping. Oh my goodness. This is hilarious. I wonder how much mascara I have done my face. <laughs> Well, quite a bit. Oh, I shouldn't have worn makeup. Is that bad? There you That's go. Hilarious. You got it. Whoa. I haven't chopped an onion in a while. Okay. So first what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, saute the onion. Mean, this is a little avocado oil. Avocado oil. Um, actually, we use avocado oil at pocha. So I'm going to um, saute garlic and onion. I'm going to put a little butter in there too. That makes it a little richer. I'll do the, um, the garlic and the onion first. And then I'm going to 
throw in the rest of the ingredients. Wow, that was intense. Next time, no mascara. <laughs> Actually, put it in all the onion. It really cooks down a lot. I mean, I see you do a lot of cooking, and I know that you're doing a lot of plant based. Yes, yes, I've been doing a lot of plant based. It's a learning experience every day. I try to make things delicious, but luckily, um, you know, Mexican cuisine is initially uh, truly plant based with yeah. beans, squash um and chiles and that so try to incorporate those every day more and more into your diet again oats and chia and plant um almond milk and things like that just be more con being, i'm just being more conscientious are you full um, on vegan now um i had i had a lesson i'm plant-based plant-based because i guess vegan is a way of living like huh? no leather ah. goods all that kind of thing and i appreciate that but i'm more plant-based so just incorporate a lot more um, tofu and other things like that. But I still try to keep my flavors true and cook as much as possible. Yeah. Do you cook every day almost? I do. I do. I cook every day and then like cook for like on Sundays or midweek. I'll make a bunch of stuff like a quinoa salad. Um, I'll grill up some veggies. I'll make overnight oats for breakfast or chop up vegetables. Um, fruit for for smoothies and always looking for new recipes also incorporate new vegetables you know to kind of mix it up a bit but for me it's like therapy i cook for therapy besides loving it all in the food industry but I, for me it's just the process of chopping and cooking and putting it together um, i really enjoy that process i find it therapeutic and i also find it very creative like you know painters will paint, you know, with colors or different sort of, um, you know, materials. I feel like this is very creative and that you dealing that you get to deal with different colors and flavors. And textures and, and, and textures. textures. Like the other day I did um, a plant-based crab cake with artichoke hearts and garbanzos. And then I made a, a plant-based roulade to go with it. So you, and then you still get the flavors with all the different seasonings and then with different textures and the air fryer also has been my friend as well um, oh. to crib things up. I don't own an air fryer yet. Is it? It's, a, um, do, it's do really good with chilies. Ooh. So like the poblanos, I put them in there and it, it blisters them up really quick, really nicely. If I don't have time, if I'm cooking a lot, I don't have time to really tend to them on the burners. Yeah, I just put them into the air fryer and then they blister up and then I take them out. So just for extra space on the stove. I know this seems like a lot of onion, but I'm cooking it down, uh, sort of caramelizing it. I'm going to throw in the minced garlic too. I like a lot of garlic. Um, so it's up to you how much you want to put in. Um, this is probably like a tablespoon. Um, I probably put in a lot of uh, onion too, but it just really gives it flavor. So if you notice, I have two different pans going, also just for, um, you know, to to time time purposes. Um, so I have I put the uh, white corn in here, which you can also do um, if you want. It's like you you want to grill some corn, uh, and then you know cut it off the cob, like it's you know sort of like a biscuit style. Um, you can. You can grill the corn and it's nice and um, you get some nice chard on there. Um, this one was just, you know, honestly, frozen corn. This one is. Um, and I'm just uh, browning it a little bit. So uh, that's going in that pan while the onions and the garlic are going in this one. And I'll merge them. I'll, I'll merge them together. I'll be just uh, cooking them at different, at different uh, rates right now. Mm, it smells really good. So I'm going to put in the poblanos, the rajas. It smells so good. In a minute, I'm going to throw in the calabaza. Um, I tend to not cook the 
calabaza. That much I don't like it when it gets too too soft and foggy. Um, so I just you know try to brown it a little bit, but not too overcooked. I'm gonna put a little salt in in a minute. This is coming along nicely. I'm starting to have a lot of fun doing these. I remember the first one I did, that was super nice. <laughs> oh, the first one in casa? Yes. Oh. I was like, oh my God. Oh, I'm like, all right, this is fun. <laughs> you know, I'm really starting, I want to talk about that. I'm really starting to um, enjoy this journey a lot. If I can be totally transparent, you know, starting out a new business is super stressful. Then, you know, sprinkle on top of that, uh, you know, a pandemic in, in probably one of the most impacted industries in the, you know, in the entire, you know, last couple of years. So I have to say that, you know, it's been super stressful the last couple of years and I haven't exactly enjoyed every aspect of the process um, until recently. I'm really starting to just enjoy the journey. So before, um, you know, before all of this, I had shared that I had never really cooked in a commercial kitchen, which is a whole other thing, guys. Like, I love cooking at home. I love bringing my family together around the table and we gather and, um, you know, it's just that I love the way it brings people together. But, you know, when you're working in a restaurant, in a commercial kitchen, and, you know, those tickets are firing out of the machine, I always say it, sometimes it sounds like a semi-automatic rifle, the way they're starting to, like, come out of the machine. Like, it's a really intense environment. And I have never, um, you know, I've, I've never done that before. But as a result of this whole crazy thing, um, you know, hiring people or getting people to stay or show up for work or making sure that they're healthy and not having them come in when they're not healthy. Like I really had to learn how to fill in the gaps. So, you know, if, if the dishwasher didn't show up, <laughs> me, the dishwasher was me. If the roof caved in and the floor flooded and there was no one to do it, well, guess who was going to do it? Me. Like they always say, you know, you can tell who the owner is. It's the person who's running around with the plunger. Like that was me. <laughs> so, you know, there's some days where I felt like I can't do this for another second. You know, if I was short a cook, um, guess who had to show up? Me. So I learned how to do every single job at any given day of the week. If anyone doesn't show up for their shift, I can jump in the mix and take over, you know, that position. So um, I'm starting to have fun with it. Like I actually like schedule myself for like cooking shifts now. I, um, I schedule myself for prep shifts. I schedule myself for server shifts. I'm well, that just makes yeah. you a, a, a more well-rounded hefa because a yeah. hefa knows what it really takes to be in the trenches. Right. Um, right. And again, working at uh, nonprofits, um, you can have this big title, but you're ending up, you know, schlepping a cart, attending the customer, um, bringing this, speaking. Um, and I think that's just being, as women, we know how to multitask and make it work. And we love, if we love our jobs, we do what it takes to make it go forward for it to be successful. So the outside people um, who are enjoying your food at your restaurant, Claire, they get a beautiful plate, but they have no idea what was the process in the background to make it look so seamless. Right. And that's the same thing with us too. It's like, there's a lot going on, but what's so important is the customer or our guests that they have a wonderful experience, even though how crazy, how it makes it happen, but it's by delegating and being really a hundred percent committed um, to your program and to your kitchen. Yes. And I, I think it's really important too, um, from a leadership, a leadership standpoint to when, you know, when you're delegating, when you're asking people to do things just for people to know and have that respect because they've seen you do it too. I'm not asking anyone to do anything that I haven't done, won't do, or I'm not willing to do. Like I have done it. I'm willing to do it. And I know what needs to be done. I also know how long it takes. I also know, you know, what, what, you know, what it's like. Um, it's also been a really, really big blessing because I had only had front of house experience. So just to understand how things really work in the back of the house, there's a lot more 
communication and understanding that it, it's a fluid dance um because i understand it now you know i'm not asking i don't have crazy demands of the kitchen because i know i know what it takes and i also know in the kitchen what the what the servers are dealing with you know being the the face um and the you know that 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 uh, person that's dealing with with the customer and how much running around you know their job takes as well no it's, it's very humbling it's very humbling to do all aspects, but if anything, when things settle down, uh, when you do hire, you know, you know exactly what, what it all entails um, and know, you know, know what to look for and also look for that type of a person who will be equally as giving and mm -hmm. be able to do all facets of the job for, you know, to make the restaurant or the program move forward. Just putting a little salt in. Seems like a lot, but it's not. <laughs> so it's just uh, simmering a little here, sauteing. In the minute here, I'm gonna pour in the crema mexicana. And like I said, the calabaza, I don't overcook it. You know, if you overcook it, it will get mushy. Uh, so I do like it still a little crisp and I also like it where I keep the nutrients. In. Will we be able to find this recipe at your restaurant, Claire? Yeah, we actually serve it as a side dish and we serve it as um, in a taco as well. It's called um, calabacitas con elote y rajas. And it is, um, like I said, vegetarian. Um, we do serve it on, um, on in a flour tortilla. It's actually the only, um, it's actually the only um, taco that is served on a flour tortilla as a default. Every other um, taco is served on corn. And I think I told you about that. I get my corn tortillas from Colonel of Truth. Oh, good for you. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> we're big fans of Colonel of Truth. They were so kind for the um, maize exhibition. They let us borrow and it's on display one of the, the, the grinding stones that they uh -huh. use to, to grind all their um, American GMO organic corn. <laughs> in Boyle Heights. If you get a chance to support and you see them, they have wonderful um, organic tortillas. And once you have one of those tortillas, you cannot go back to the other stuff. It's such a treat. Yeah, and you know, my my vision had always been to make the tortillas in-house. Our kitchen is tiny. And also, um, you know, that's this labor that we haven't been able to really afford um so they you know we've tried a lot of a lot of tortillas and they're really, and they're really good so i just put in the crema mexicana it's gonna make it a little bit richer and in the very end i'm gonna throw in queso fresco and there's not a whole lot i mean there's there's a there's a little bit it just gives it a nice richness um so yeah how am I doing on time? We're good. We actually have our first question of the afternoon from Dolores Dweck. Uh, what is your favorite calabasas to use for this recipe? Um, for this one, I use the um, Italian squash. Um, you can also use the Mexican squash, um, but I, I use uh, the Italian one for this, for this particular dish in there. Um, they're the ones that are a little bit longer, the green ones, and then the Mexican ones are a little bit lighter, um, fatter, stouter. Mm -hmm. um, I find that the the Mexican squash for this, they they tend to get a little bit um, like just more, there's more like water in it or more liquidy, a little, tend to get a little mushier. Um, but then again, you know, just don't cook them as much. And I and think... Oh, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. No, I know things are getting really busy. Do you think you guys will be, uh, are you guys able to cater outside of Pocha? Yes, I actually, so it's funny. I, my, my motto, and actually I didn't, it's not my motto. I think I got it from Richard Branson. Um, he just says yes. And then figures it out. He's just the, the, you know, the king of like, all right, you know, screw it, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So I've been, you know, I don't know. I kind of think 
Richard Branson kind of has it going on. So I've been adopting his screw it, let's do it <laughs> you know, uh, attitude. So we um, have a catering event this weekend for 75 people, which is off campus. Um, sometimes we supply the labor. Um, sometimes they just want us to you know, deliver the catering to them. Um, we also have on May 6th, we have an event for 250 people. That's the biggest I've ever done. Although we have done some weddings um and uh rehearsal dinners we've been having a lot of rehearsal dinners at pocha but the one for 250 people is off campus we're going to be bringing the food and then serving we're going to be providing the labor as well so um you know i'm not sure how we're going to execute that one yet but i guarantee you we'll get it done <laughs> so yeah I know you've done some nice pop-ups for us when we have our salsa events or now that we're opening up for the summer, you guys have been great uh, providing delicious food at all our, our events. So I'm going to show you this. I'll show you this before I put it in the plate. Look how delicious that looks. Can you see that? Yum. And um, I like it. I like to get, you know, when I did the corn, actually, I tried to brown it a little bit, but just so it gets a nice... Um, give it some nice layer. Toast it is what I'm trying to say. I toasted it. Um, so here we go. It smells really good. And like I said, you can serve this as a side dish. Um, you know, get your nice, nice veggies in. Uh, or you can put it in a taco. And here you go. If you want, you can top it with some more queso fresco, some fresh queso fresco and a little bit of fresh cilantro. Um, I didn't save any of the queso fresco, so I, <laughs> I, didn't do, I threw that all in here, I forgot. Um, but yeah, you can do that and serve it like this and put a spoon in it and uh, put it on the table as a side dish or serve it with some tortillas and load up. That, the looks, that looks so delicious, so comforting. Let, hang on to it, don't go too far because I need my compañero Averaldo. He's gonna take a picture. As you know, for every single in casa session um, they live forever on facebook and also on our um youtube channel and the, the the how it starts off is with the photograph of the actual dish so people know what we're talking about so yeah. con eso le paso mi compañero Abelardo, photo time Abelardo. yes i am here hold on let me just get myself ready all right Yamero. <laughs> okay. it smells so good okay fantastic nice smile beautiful thank you so much Thank you. Thank you guys for the opportunity. Always. I'm so grateful for your support and all the exposure and visibility that you have brought to Pocha, my baby who just turned two years old. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so happy that we connected and that we met. And I'm just really excited about um, Creciendo Juntos with you and with Pepsi. <laughs> no, absolutely. I'm so proud, so happy. It's such a pleasure to work with you. Please let folks know where we can find Pocha LA. Pocha LA, our online uh, presence is at pochala.com. And we are located at 6101 York Boulevard in beautiful Northeast Los Angeles, Highland Park. And we're on the corner of Branch and York. Perfect. Muchísimas gracias. Adelante. I look forward to seeing you on our campus now that we're opening up for the summer. We've got salsa. Uh, we have a la sonora uh, dinamita. We have all these, a norteño night. We have all these great upcoming events. And I'd like to invite you to be our pop up for one of many of our different uh, events that we're having. But con eso said, muchísimas gracias. Adelante. Keep doing what you're doing. Obviously, you're doing something right because you got all these doors are constantly opening up and keep growing that vision board. I'm very inspired by you all. But thank you so much. Y con eso, I pass it to Mr. Averardo. Gracias. Well, muchas gracias, Claire. Muchas gracias, uh, Jimena, for joining us today on En Casa con la Plaza Cocina. I'm dialing in from my son's casa here in the Northwest in uh, DuPont, Washington. And uh, it's warming me up. It's been super, super cold up here. But uh, just looking at that wonderful dish uh, warms me up. And I'm going to see if my daughter-in-law could prepare for us tonight. It's so anyway. Thank you, everybody that joined us today. If you didn't catch the entire uh, session or, or if you'd like to see it again, please, we're posting it uh, later on this today on our YouTube channel. It is, also lives on our Facebook channel at La Plaza LA for both. Also on our website, lapca.org. Uh, along with all the other En Casa con la Plaza Cocina that Jimena has hosted, I think we're at 
60, 70, who knows how many, but there's a whole lot of them, including Claire's previous performances. But go to our YouTube site uh, at La Plaza LA and you'll find them all there as, uh, as well as our other En Casa con La Plaza sessions. Coming up the rest of the week here. Uh, well, today, of course, we had Calabacitas, Ponelote y Rajas with Claire Risoli, Pocho LA. Uh, on Wednesday, Mastering Portraiture and Murals with Eloy Torres an artist and muralist. It'll be uh, on En Casa con La Plaza at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Live at La Plaza this Thursday, Platica, Voices of the Moratorium, Cultural Influences of the Moratorium with David Botello, with Oscar Castillo, with uh, uh, Rosalio Munoz, with uh, Carlos Montes and Jesus Velo. They'll be there live at La Plaza LA. So come on up on Thursday, April 21st, starts at 7. And then on Friday, Dan Guerrero Happy Hour with Eden Espinosa. She's a Broadway star from Anaheim. Uh, and, and she's been on Broadway in Wicked and in Rent, both on Broadway and in touring companies. And finally, this Sunday, our second uh, family day of the year, Dia de los Niños with uh, uh, art, culinary, and garden workshops and demonstrations. And on stage three, Ballet Folklorico's local dance groups that will be there to entertain you are, it's sponsored by the Department of Cultural Affairs, LA City, and also Comerica Bank. Uh, so some special things going on this week, both online and in person. So with that, muchas gracias a todos. Thanks to our sponsors for En Casa Con La Plaza, which include the Institute of Museum and Library Services and Union Pacific Foundation. So muchas gracias again, Claire. We'll see you soon. That's at your at your place in Highland Park, I've taken my family there a couple of times, and I'm sure we're going to be there pretty soon. And thank, thank you, Jimena. We'll see you when I return uh, later on this week. Nos vemos. Gracias. Okay. Bye. Gracias. Adios a todos. Bye bye.